Darwin has probably been one of the most underrepresented characters in this series. After I said Darwin has nothing too remarkable about him, I knew I had to correct my wrongs. What I actually found about Darwin made even me realize he isn't just some remarkable fish that has evolved and mutated, but rather Darwin is a super powerful being who can move the earth and manipulate his own genetic code and chemical structure. Now, I'll start this analysis off in chronological order, and then eventually getting to the present day are as present as possible, starting off with the most obvious of Darwin's abilities, his remarkable mutation or evolution, whatever you want to call it, and his ability to receive and reciprocate human speech as well as comprehend directions and questions. When Gumbel got Darwin number who knows, this one was special, maybe because it came from a magical van with weird items, which may also be the source of this show's outlandish affairs, but that's for another video. Coming back to what I was saying, the present Darwin was able to talk, change his facial structure, mock Mr. Dad, and communicate with Gumball. Of course, all after Mr. Dad gave the man in the van his pocket change. However, in a tragic twist of events, Darwin's very abilities are what caused him to be separated from the family, starting the epic of Darwin. Darwin begins his journey after being bought by Mr. Dad and then being accidentally flushed down a toilet. Afterwards, Darwin is able to evolve lungs through sheer will, a fish of commitment and focus. And with his befitting name Darwin, he begins his journey as a small fish, growing larger through the days and eventually reaching Elmore, but not before facing multiple perilous obstacles in his way. Darwin was able to accomplish many of his feats through the use of the cliche power of friendship, although this power itself has some physical backing to it. Now, instead of diving right into this power, let's first take a look at the reality and the more biological basis for the attributes of Darwin, getting into the astounding power of friendship in a different section of the video. Darwin can copy and imitate those that he talks to, first copying Mr. Dad, then copying and answering Gumball's questions. Not only does he imitate Gumball's faces like Kakashi, but he also answers and gives responses to Gumball's complex questions through either facial expressions and morphing himself or literally talking. For example, when Gumball asks Darwin the important question of who would win, piranhas or sharks, Darwin morphs himself into a prana, which is the wrong answer, but I'll give Darwin a pass on this one. In light of all this, Darwin can also speak, despite being a fish, which already puts his intelligence near comparable to Anais and also much higher relative to other fish maybe hundreds of times more intelligent than other fish. The tragedy of Darwin begins with a tinge of irony, as his very abilities are what had him get flushed. First by mocking Mr. Dad, then acting dumb to the point of acting dead, wherein he's mistakenly almost flushed down the toilet. Afterwards, the real biological and physical attributes of Darwin, as well as Darwin's skills, shine, where he grows lungs, legs, and learns to talk on the way back to Gumball. A quick google search shows that the beach is around 100 miles from Elmore, which is the distance Darwin must cover, with no food, no water, and no nutrition, but only his sheer willpower and mental strength, which is one of his strengths. The start of Darwin's journey has him come out from the sea and struggle to breathe for a while, until Gumball's seemingly magical connection with Darwin sends the power of friendship through to the small fish, and has him mutate and evolve lungs instantly already beating all the fish in the ocean, but more importantly, manipulating his reserve stem cells and changing his genetic code to create these lungs from seemingly nothing into complex organs and cells which can process the oxygen around him and bring it to his mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, to complete chemiosmosis. Now, as Darwin begins his journey, it takes him two days to go through an unknown amount of distance. Now, we won't go through the physics here since that's for the next section, but more importantly, it takes Darwin two days to deplete his nutrient reserves while maintaining the same speed he has been traveling at fatiguing all his muscles, and through sheer willpower keeping himself moving through sweltering heat, cold, and adverse weather conditions, just going to show the strength of his mind and the psychological power of Darwin. With his body struggling to maintain homeostasis, trying its best to allocate all of its calories efficiently, Darwin's body is on the brink of running out of glucose, and his body nears non-functionality. He should be dead or at least on the brink of dying, but again his mental ability is so strong that he can swat a bald eagle and sustain heavy damage from falling off a tree to having a rock fall on his head. As his body tries to recover and fix all the damage done onto him through all the injuries he has sustained, a seemingly magical boost of energy like those of some other characters <coughs> brings him back. This magical boost of energy into Darwin replenishes his glucose and brings them back to normal levels, letting him create the energy he needs and also in turn having him evolve legs, beating fish, and snakes this time. These legs are created through a combination of rewriting of his genes and the use of the stem cells, which he still has somehow. Finally, our hero reaches Elmore, not short of breaking all laws of biology. 
Darwin has beaten fish and snakes by evolving lungs and feet, as well as seeming to grow to the same size as Gumball after his 100 mile journey. Speaking of which, he was able to walk 100 miles from the beach all the way to Elmore through sheer willpower and anime protagonist powers, burning about 57 calories per mile, or around 5700 calories for the entire journey. Not bad considering how small he is. Darwin has also gained weight however, and seeing that he is almost the same size as Gumball now, going from a small fish to almost the weight of a toddler, it's as though he gained around 20 pounds, which would require putting on 70,000 calories, which Darwin didn't have access to as he didn't have any food on his journey, and the only food he did get was after he scared off the lady, which is consequently also after he gained the weight. What this means is that Darwin has not only manipulated his own genetic code, but is also a plant getting energy from the sunlight and being able to create his own energy supply and also being able to ingest food to gain his energy. Darwin uses around 70 joules of energy and subsequently through the 10% rule, around 700 joules came from the sun, making him a being that can gain energy from the sun when food isn't available and a being that has an abnormally high endurance even without energy. With Darwin being able to gain energy from the sun and rewrite his genetic code, he can also morph and shift his own body in different ways as mentioned before. This can come to his advantage as when he is hit by a truck, he can absorb the blast by rubberizing his body to spread the shock throughout his body and diffuse it across himself. Darwin can change the material of his body and make it flexible or rigid at will, also hinting at the chemical properties of Darwin, being able to manipulate the compounds in his body and being able to make the chemical molecules more intertwined or flexible at Darwin's will changing the unsaturated fats in his face into saturated fats, breaking and reforming the chemical bonds of the fats in his cells. Being able to do such a feat would not only require Darwin to be consciously aware of his cells and atoms, but to also be able to break those cells and molecules, either through biological reactions of hydrolyzation or a dehydration reaction, which are reactions which involve water reacting with molecules to change them, either through the molecules gaining a hydrogen atom or giving away a hydrogen atom. Now not only can Darwin manipulate his biology and chemistry, Darwin can also manipulate his opponents using hypnosis through changing his eyes, likely due to his ability to change the very atoms of his molecular biology, being able to create a hypnosis effect, and then in turn making his brother hypnotized, through Darwin's psychological ability. Also, Darwin can bring out alternate timelines from his brother by having him remember the past, likely mimicking and using Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis which aims to bring out the deep and hidden memories that are haunting and plaguing an individual. Darwin's hypnosis can affect his brother and change the physical surroundings of the world through merely his psychological power, quite literally saying and creating. He is possibly using this ability to manipulate atoms and chemical processes to increase the density of the air around his brother, to have him go through the floor. Darwin's ability to copy his brother and others is not only used to copy his family, but to also copy people like the weak Goku going Super Saiyan. Darwin likely manipulates his own biology and chemistry while also using his extreme physical and chemical power and properties respectively, likely being able to take and copy all the power and physical stats of the Super Saiyan form he takes. Darwin can also, similar to a lizard, destroy his eyes and bring them back through the use of his cells dividing and substituting into the new areas of the eye. Now, finally, to just drive the point home, Darwin can erase his own eyes and mark them back on and turn himself into a parasite almost mimicking the parasite entirely, likely due to his ability to manipulate his own biology and the atoms and molecules around him consciously. Through this research, it's safe to say that Darwin Waterson wasn't just some random fish as I had thought. Now, aside from the epic of Darwin and his biological and chemical characteristics, the physical abilities and features of Darwin are also something that can't be ignored. Darwin was able to move the earth through his sneeze. We can figure out the energy he uses to do this by finding out how far the earth moves. To do this, we can use the gravitational field of the earth, which is 10 meters per second squared, and the time it takes for Darwin, Anais, and Gumball to reach the ground, which comes out to around 3 seconds. Taking the values and putting them into the kinematics equation, delta x equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared, we get that the trio falls roughly 80 meters. This distance is also the same distance that Darwin moves the earth. An example of this would be if you had two magnets that were very strongly attracted to each other, the magnets in this case being the Earth and Darwin. If you held the two magnets above the ground at any distance, the two magnets will stick to each other since they are attracted to each other, similar to how we are stuck to the Earth because of the Earth's gravitational field. Now, if you move one magnet down, we'll call this magnet that's moving towards the ground Earth, 
and keep the other magnet in the same area. We'll call this magnet in the same place Darwin. The magnet you're holding in your hand, i.e. Darwin, hasn't moved at all. The hand moving the magnet, Earth, towards the ground in this case would be the same as the sneeze that Darwin used to move the Earth. Now, if you let the magnet that is suspended in mid-air, the one that hasn't moved at all, it would rush back down to the magnet that is nearer to the ground, this magnet being Earth. Since the hand you use to move the magnet closer to the ground is like Darwin's sneeze, and the magnet that you held up, which once you let go, rushed towards the magnet on the ground is like Darwin, the distance you move the magnet towards the ground using your hand is also the same distance that the magnet suspended in the air travels. Since the Earth is in circular motion around the Sun, with the centripetal force being around 3.57 times 10 raised to the 22nd newtons, as found by using Newton's second law, F equals negative G mass of the Earth times mass of the Sun divided by R squared, just to have the Earth move, assuming the system is in a reference frame away from the Earth and the Sun, and the system itself is static, Darwin will have to apply a force greater than the force between the Earth and the Sun just to move it a little bit. Lucky for us, we know the time and distance it takes Darwin to move the Earth. In just 3 seconds, Darwin was able to move the Earth 80 meters. This force can be found using the equation F equals dp divided by dt, where dp is the change in momentum and dt is the change in time. The change in momentum is the mass of the Earth multiplied by the final velocity, however since it's difficult for me to calculate the exact change, I decided to go with the average velocity, which comes out to be around 27 meters per second. Now, finally taking all the values and crunching the numbers, the force Darwin exerts upon the Earth in this scene is a cool 5.3 times 10 raised to the 25th newtons, or 5.32 multiplied by 1 with a lot of zeros after it. With this force applied, the energy Darwin applies can also be found through the work energy theorem. As work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, and since the change in kinetic energy of the Earth is just the final kinetic energy, which will be equal to the work done, which is the force applied by Darwin multiplied by the distance Darwin travels, this comes out to 5.32 times 10 raised to the 25th newtons times 80 meters, or calculated comes out to around 4.3 times 10 raised to the 27th joules of energy that Darwin himself applied upon the Earth, which is, just to put in reference, around two Hiroshima nuclear bombs. Now, aside from this probably being the maximum force and work that Darwin uses in the entirety of his life, this was from his sneeze, which can only happen, well, if he sneezes, whether from being allergic or forcing himself by downing a gallon of pepper. Something more intriguing would be Darwin's ability to scream at supersonic sounds, shattering glass, popping people, and giving his siblings tinnitus. In this scene where an object is dropped onto Darwin's foot weighing enough to make a grown man cry, Darwin produces an ear-splitting scream, shattering the glass windows of him and his neighbors. Now, first we'd have to figure out how long this supersonic pitch scream was sustained for, which comes out to be around 3 seconds. Now glass, or any object for that matter, shatters when it comes into contact with a sound wave that matches the object's resonance, or the frequency the object naturally vibrates at. For glass, this would be around 556 hertz. Now, not just required is for the frequencies to match, but also for the energy and intensity to be very high, which in the case of breaking glass comes out to be 105 decibels, or around the average dad watching a football match. Solving for the intensity of this wave by rearranging the equation for decibels, we get that a 105 decibel sound has an intensity of around square root 10,000 watts per meter squared. Now, since the intensity equation is directly related to power, we can subsequently solve for how many watts Darwin emits when sustaining the scream over a period of 3 seconds. Using the equation power equals intensity times 4 pi times r squared, 4 pi r squared since the sound wave travels in a spherical fashion, after using myself as a measuring tape to figure out the distance an average house is, and then applying those values to this scene, we get that an average house has a driveway length of around 3.66 meters, and a house length of around 14.6 meters, and a total house length of around 18.3 meters. We can then use these values accordingly, by first taking the sound source to be coming from the middle of the Watterson's house, then referencing the values for the house's length, we can get the radius of the equation's denominator, or the distance, by taking the Watterson's house up till the end of the neighbor's house, where the glass shatters on both sides coming to around 25.6 meters from the sound source to the end of the neighbor's house. Finally, substituting in all values into the equation, we get that to generate this much sound, to shatter the glass entirely, the energy source must be emitting power of around 260,429.27 watts. 
or the average dad watching football. Finally, we can find the work done by Darwin if we multiply the power by the time Darwin sustains this sound, which comes out to 781,287.81 joules of energy that Darwin uses to move one sound wave to the end of his neighbor's house. Now, remember at the beginning when I said Darwin would have to emit a frequency of at least 556 hertz to break the glass and match its resonant frequency? Well, that really means Darwin is moving 556 of these waves every second, which means 556 sound waves from peak to trough are passing a single point on the glass every second. Since Darwin holds this sound for 3 seconds, he moves about 1668 waves of sound, 25.6 meters, using just his voice. If the work to move a single wave is 781,287.81 joules of energy, you do the math as to how much energy it would take to move 1,668 waves. Just kidding, that's my job. Multiplying 781,287.81 by 1,668, we get the total energy passing through to the end of the neighbor's house is 1.3 times 10 raised to the ninth joules, which is subsequently the amount of energy Darwin emitted due to the law of conservation of energy. But this number is likely in actuality much higher since the distance between Darwin and the windows had friction and other obstacles reducing the energy of each wave. Now, if the energy aspect of Darwin's melodious scream, which is similar to someone else with a powerful scream, doesn't seem too strong to you, Darwin's scream caused physical damage to his insanely powerful siblings and also popped a man like a balloon. Maybe because that man was a balloon. Since getting exact values for this was difficult due to the lack of information, I instead mapped a function of time and distance and a function of just distance. Let's first take the beginning properties as we did before for a sound wave, those being the frequency, intensity, decibels, sound speed, and so on. From start to finish, the time it takes Darwin to complete his scream is around 7 seconds, and at the 7 second mark, popping the balloon. If the decibels required to rupture a balloon like that is around 168 decibels, almost as loud as two dads watching football, then the intensity would have to be around 10 raised to the 4.8 watts per meter squared. Since the power is directly related to this, we get that the power is a function of the distance the wave has traveled, assuming that the loudness and intensity stays the same at 10 raised to the 4.8 watts per meter squared for the intensity, meaning that depending on the distance, the power can increase or decrease proportional to the square. Since Darwin is point blank to Anais and Gumball, we can estimate around 0.5 meters, and thus the power he uses to have the scream reach them is around 314,000 watts. And if we assume the radio station that the balloon is on to be 1 kilometer away or 1,000 meters, and we ignore all the friction and interference the wave would have traversing through the walls and losing energy while moving, Darwin's power would be a whopping 8 times 10 raised to the 11th watts. Now, this power function can be mapped as a parabolic curve, and so too can the energy function. Since we know that power is just work divided by time, we can substitute in work and multiply the function by time to get that work is equal to the intensity times 4 times pi times x squared times t, which is a three-dimensional curve represented as this function. If we choose our time function to be a function of distance and time to be a constant 7, we can get a function of work for distance, which can be plotted and found for any distance using a software like Desmos. For our demonstration, I'm going to take the maximum distance where he popped the balloon to be 1000 meters and ignore all interference and energy loss, which means that the likely energy Darwin uses is much greater than what is calculated. So once all values are substituted, Darwin emits around 9 times 10 raised to the 12th joules of energy as a lower bound. As a side note, Darwin would also have to make at least a 20,000 hertz sound to create a ringing in his sibling's ear. Around every second, Darwin likely produces more than 20 kilohertz, meaning more than 20,000 sound waves pass a single area. Doing more multiplication and making some generous assumptions, for the balloon man to pop with at least 20,000 hertz passing through him for a sustained period of 7 seconds, Darwin would have to use at least 1.26 times 10 raised to the 18th joules of energy as a lower bound, likely more due to all the interference from objects outside. Darwin's astounding ability to scream and pop balloons like, well, balloons from a far distance isn't the only thing he can do. Darwin is also able to run with Mr. Dad and Gumball, pushing Mr. Dad in the process. If we take this frame by frame and assume a parking spot to be 9 feet in length, and since the group passes around 4 parking spots, the total distance covered is 36 feet, converted to meters around 11 meters. This distance is covered by the trio in just 0.28 seconds, 
Mr. Dad weighs around 1500 kilograms and the coefficient of friction between a shopping cart and the asphalt is around 0.5. If the normal force of Mr. Dad is 15,000 newtons multiplied by 0.5, the force of friction is 7500 newtons. Since the equation for force of friction is the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force and the normal force is equal to the mass of an object multiplied by gravity. Since the pair are combating this force to move at a speed of 39.28 meters per second found by dividing the distance by the time or 11 meters divided by 0.28 seconds, the pair must be pushing with a sustained force of 7500 newtons and finding just Darwin's contribution by dividing by 2 we get 3,250 newtons that Darwin is using. The momentum of the system comes out to around 58,920 newton time seconds. And since Darwin uses around 3,250 newtons of force, we can also find the power. Power is equal to work divided by time, but since we don't have the time or the work, we can substitute instead the work for force times distance, which is another equation for work. We have the force, but we don't have the time or distance, so we can instead refer to the formula for velocity, which is distance divided by time. Isolating for distance, we get that distance is equal to velocity times time, and then we can substitute this definition for distance into the equation for power. Now we have work equals force times velocity times time divided by time. Since anything divided by itself is one, time will go away and we're left with power equals force times velocity, both values that we have. Substituting in 3250 for the newtons of force and 39.28 meters per second for the velocity, we get that the power Darwin uses is 127,660 watts, around 170 horsepower. Since we can assume the trio travels at a constant speed for the duration of this scene, we can also create a function of work using power and time. Seeing that power equals work divided by time, isolating work by multiplying by time, we get that power times time equals work. Replacing power with the constant 127,660 watts and plotting this function on a graph, we can figure out how much energy Darwin uses per unit time that passes in this scene. But more importantly, we can finally use y equals mx plus b in real life. Aside from the physical and mechanical aspects of Darwin's own energy, he can also transfer energy to others and the good vibes car. Since energy is always conserved, the energy Darwin gives to Mr. Small's car is the energy he loses. Furthermore, Mr. Small's car travels at around 21.4 meters per second, in this scene carrying a load of Darwin, Mr. Small, Gumball, and a dinosaur. Specifically, a brontosaurus, I think. This comes out to around 22,900 kilograms for the people inside, and 2,000 kilograms for the van itself. The kinetic energy equation, Ke equals 1 half mv squared, can help us figure out the kinetic energy for the van, which, after substituting in all values for velocity and mass, comes out to around 5.7 times 10 raised to the sixth joules of energy that Darwin transfers to the van and loses himself. A measly amount for a supreme being. Now, Darwin can emit heavy power, but how much can he endure? Well, I think a good ballpark would be the entirety of the universe. After Darwin travels back to the Big Bang, he lives through it, eating around 10 raised to the 68th joules of energy, which is already an unprecedented endurance, which no character can ever dream of getting close to enduring. Since, well, it's all of the energy that ever will be and that ever has been in the universe. Now, surviving the entirety of all the energy in the universe is probably the peak of Darwin's abilities, there are some more notable moments, such as keeping up with a car going at a minimum of 20 miles per hour, sustaining and enduring more injuries while already injured, being able to breathe for a while with a couch on top of his body, or around 10,000 pounds of force, being strong enough to bypass his brain's catch for not breaking his jaw, and instead breaking his jaw, putting out about 450 psi on his teeth and jaws, traveling 225 meters per second, a result of his insane legs ability to do lots of work and exert a lot of power, breaking Newton's third law, rotating a car in a closed system which requires breaking physics by creating infinite torque by rotating a car through a zero degree angle or more realistically if taken from a 90 degree angle 6 times 10 raised to the 6 torque but even more realistically seeing that darwin is almost parallel to the horizontal the car shouldn't move but it does Now, probably the most astounding characteristic of Darwin which has kept him alive throughout his journey is his deep connection with Gumball. Through a special wormhole type of connection, their hearts and the energy they have are linked together, where what the one person feels will affect the other. 
which was in turn the way that Darwin was able to mutate and evolve, as well as manipulate his own genetic code through this wormhole energy. Now, I'm not going to get into the math of these wormholes, mainly because I can't. They include symbols and words which look like a first grader's doodles, and mainly because my 3M fried brain cannot bother to make sense of what Einstein was saying when he wrote these equations. But essentially, theoretically, a wormhole would be able to connect two points in space, and in this case, the friendship slash love wormhole connects the feelings and hearts of Darwin to Gumball, which is likely the greatest strength of Darwin, making him able to receive and feel the emotions of his brother, which could likely be his greatest strength or greatest weakness. Now, if Darwin still has this ability, it is unknown, as it has never been seen after their reunion. But just seeing it in the beginning was enough to solidify the existence of it and in turn make me convinced that this has to have been the power which granted Darwin his insane ability to change his chemical and biological composition as well as endure and resist adversity. Although the first intro had given a light briefing into the psychology of Darwin, there's much more beneath the surface that goes into Darwin's psychological ability. Darwin has been seen basically becoming the good version of Hitler, if that makes any sense. But the big d Darwin, the dick stands for dictator, was able to take over all of Elmore through his psychological ability, to persevere through adversity as one can see through his 100 mile journey from the beach to Elmore. This journey in itself was the main component leading up to the development of Darwin, hardening him into one of the toughest fish in Elmore. Darwin's trauma and suffering led him to be someone who did not want to see any harm done onto others. Two cases being where he becomes the dictator of Elmore and another where he changes his own bully's attitude through kindness. Darwin strives to keep all those around him safe and well loved, but not for the reasons you may think such as keeping them safe because of what he had suffered through or because he has a caring nature, but rather Darwin is more sinister than this. The gateway through which Darwin is able to change and manipulate those around him, being his kindness, serves him the purpose of power, leading him to become a dictator. And when the time is right, Darwin will shine, becoming the ruler of the world, under the guise of goodness and kindness to only keep immense power to himself and those he trusts most closely. That, or he really is just kind-hearted to the point of being a dictator. Not only just his ability to manipulate people around him characteristic of a charming person, but Darwin and subsequently Gumball are both also able to think and literally manifest items into the physical world, such as in Dodge or Dare where they were able to manipulate the board and create real feelings of heat and neurological connections with others through a simple creation of a game and manifestation of their psychological ability into this game, making them literal supreme beings able to create and will things into existence through just their psychological ability and power of thought and imagination. Darwin is an extensive character with many intricate features, from his deep and complicated origins with him going on a hundred mile journey, a distance more than most Discord mods walk in their entire lives, his immensely complicated biological and chemical abilities to manipulate and change his DNA and molecules, and finally, his immensely strong physical ability, as well as his psychological ability to literally think and create all that he wants. I hope I've been able to correct my errors in previous parts where I had implied Darwin was just a weak Watterson. I've come to realize that Darwin may be the next.